Jedi. So what's up guys, Brandon Keith Avery here with my spoiler field review of Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. And yes, you did hear me correctly. I did say spoilers, so I'm going to talk spoilers in and out, left and right, up and down, as if you've already seen the movie. So you have been warned, and there is a link in the description box to my non-spoiler review, so check that out then come back and watch this so but what we're going to talk about first i want to talk about kylo ren but he ends up being the son and uh yeah the son of leia and han solo i did not know that going in i kind of had an idea but no i'm going to be honest i had i had no clue i kind of felt that he was related to somebody but if i had to guess i probably would have lost all my money and i really did like how the film handled that um of course he killed his father, Han Solo. I mean, that was really sad. He fell to his death. I really wish they would have um, handled Han Solo's body um, a lot better, but they didn't. They just let him fall to a pit or something. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's dead. We don't have a body to confirm that. I wish we would have had a body to confirm it, but he took a lightsaber to the chest and he kind of swung it around up in his chest and in his torso. So I'm pretty much sure he's gone. Um, but that's pretty unfortunate. Everybody loves Han Solo, but uh, it looks like he's not here anymore. As far as Luke is concerned, they didn't show him until the very end of the film. I mean, that's not a bad thing. I didn't expect him to be all over this movie, all over this film. Um, I did want a little bit more. When Kylo Ren was fighting Finn in the snow forest, and Daisy Ridley's character came at the end and used her force powers to pull the lightsaber, I just knew that that was Luke, you know, trying to pull the lightsaber towards him. They were, gonna, you know, going to battle it down and have some epic dialogue. But it wasn't. It was Daisy Ridley. And she did her thing with the lightsaber. I, I really did like that. I like that she's force sensitive. That's really cool. You know, strong female characters. That's great. I love all of that. But what kind of bugs me about it is Kylo Ren was a badass and he was trained and he knew the force in and out, had a nice outfit and all of that, had the voice modulator, that was badass, had his new lightsaber, and was force choking people from across the room and sucking them in. That was, I loved all of that. Vader wasn't doing all of that. I mean, he could do the force choke, but I've never seen Vader hold up the force choke and have someone fly across the room into his demonic death grip hands. But... Kylo Ren was doing it and I loved that. And so he was really trained and, you know, extremely force sensitive. But I mean, Kylo, not Kylo, but Daisy Ridley's character, uh, Ray and Finn, they were able to kind of hang with him with the lightsaber. And I'm just like, I don't really buy that. That kind of bugged the hell out of me. I mean, I, I didn't like that at all, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't mind them trying to fight him, but there should have been like no contest. I mean, I don't care how strong Ray's character is with the force i mean i don't know that just uh that really bugged me i mean he should have been able to kill her no i did not want her to die but they could have handled that a lot better um another kind of gripe that i had was we get another death star. <laughs> we get another death star i mean they didn't call it the death star they call it the star based killer but it's pretty much the same thing just blown up and they tried to address that just oh another death star in the movie but that wasn't just too original. I mean, yes, the bad guys need to have some ultimate weapon, you know, to go and kill the galaxy and to destroy stars and all the star systems and stuff. And it, I mean, it was cool. I liked the design. I like how it was powered from the sun. That was a beautiful effect. But I mean, that's kind of the same thing that we got in the New Hope and Return of the Jedi. And then you want to do it again? I mean, I don't know. Just kind of give us something new, you know, but you know, that's uh, not too big of a deal. I kind of also wanted more out of Captain Phasma. Um, I liked her and her chrome looking stormtrooper suit. That was pretty cool. Um, I liked that a lot, actually. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing her in episodes eight and nine. So, uh, man, I, they need to hurry up and release that. You know, 2017 uh, needs to get here as fast as it can because I cannot wait to see more of Captain Phasma. Going back towards the beginning of the film, when things were starting off, it was just so 
just weird to see Star Wars pop up on the screen and you see the, the, the rolling credits going in space. That was just pretty cool. And the first scene of the movie, um, that was a little rough for me. I don't know why I just, you know, I, it just didn't hit home for me too perfectly, um, but not much is perfect, but I wasn't hating it. Um, but it actually took me into the next scene to actually get into the film where BB-8 found uh, Ray's character. I like that. I like how she rescued him and she didn't just go over there. Hey, what's your name? I'm Ray. Are you BB-8? Let's be friends. I mean, that would have been corny. So I like how they handled that. She was like, I'm going to go this way. You go this way. And he was like, no, I'm going to follow you. And, um, you know, I, I like how they handled that. that. That was smooth. You know, I like that transition. I also really love the personality from BB-8. Thought that was great. Um, I kind of thought that Finn's and Ray's interaction initially was a little coincidental. Um, but that's just a minor gripe. I mean, they had great chemistry. Um, I really did love that. Um, I did. It also turns out that uh, Darth Vader is the grandfather of Kylo Ren, and I think that's pretty cool too. Um, a lot of uh, people online were just kind of thinking that, um, what is this guy's name? Um, not Plagueis, um, uh, Snoke, the Snoke character, that that may be Plagueis. Of course, they didn't reveal that this time, but it's a strong possibility. But I'm just kind of thinking, I mean, they have this ultimate goal, this ultimate mission. And I mean, I'm sure that they're going to play it out in the rest of the films. But I was just kind of thinking, why don't Snow go and just do this himself, you know? I mean, he admitted that Kyle Ren's character has not been trained completely, but he's given him so much responsibility. And then their Starkiller base got blown up. I mean, and he was kind of at the end just saying, hey, go get Kylo Ren and come to me now. And then I will finish his training. You know, why didn't you finish it in the first place? Or how did you even know that you was going to be able to get to him? And I mean, I, well, I guess the force is strong. Well, no, I, I take that back. Now that I'm thinking about it. I guess the force within him is super duper duper strong. Of course, that makes sense. So he would know if he's dead or alive down there. But um, so, yeah, I guess that makes sense. But initially, I just didn't buy that. Uh, and, uh, you know, Luke came at the end. You know, they, they did kind of rehash a lot from A New Hope Episode 4. You know, with the map and the droid trying to get to the base to deliver the message. That's kind of the same thing that BB-8 was doing. Um, but I, I really did like um, Kylo Ren's power uh, and his force and how he was able to manipulate the mind and torture people and get information out of them. That was really cool. I liked that a lot. I really did. I really did. Um, you know, I kind of wanted more out of the Mad Dog character from the Raid Redemption, the first one. He had a little snippet. I thought he was going to be one of those Knights of Ren or something and doing a whole bunch of martial arts with lightsabers and stuff. That would have been freaking badass, but he had a blaster or whatever. So, you know, I don't know what that's about. Um, I, I kind of wanted some martial arts from them, but... Maybe they're going to do something in episodes eight and nine or the anthology films. Um, but, you know, that I mean, it was still cool, though. But overall, I really did love the film uh, for the most part. I mean, of course, I'm going to go see it in the theaters again, maybe at least one more time. I don't know about three, but at least one more time. I did see it in IMAX 3D. Um, the 3D was OK. I saw this at 140 in the morning. Um, at a real IMAX 3D, not Limax, but a real 70 millimeter IMAX screen because I thought that some of the film was shot with IMAX cameras. And I really couldn't tell, you know, when I saw Transformers Revenge of the Fallen or The Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises or Interstellar, that was blatantly obvious, you know, the transition in the screens. But with this one here, it really didn't make much of a difference. And, and in my non-spoiler review, I was talking about the overall story all they're doing is looking for Luke. I mean, that's all they're doing is looking for Luke. That's it. And uh, they could have fleshed it out a bit more. They didn't, but that's okay. Lupita Nyong'o's character, um, I was a little disappointed with uh, her. I wanted a bit more. The CGI was fine. It was okay. It didn't blow me away, but yeah. So guys, that is just my opinion for Star Wars The Force Awakens, my spoiler review. What did you think? Let me know in the comments section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, 
go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you didn't like this video, that's fine. Just let me know why in the comment section below. And still, give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. So become one of my subscribers and get all the content that I have to provide in the past and in the future. And if you would like a written review for this film or any other films that I've written, just head over to my website. You can find it at www.justmyopinion.net. And if you want to find the official Facebook page, you can. Just facebook.com slash justmyopinion or just type in your search bar justmyopinion.net. It'll come up. Like the page. Also, if you're into social media, which I'm sure you are, you're going to find me at Instagram and Twitter at JustMyOpinion84. So guys, thank you for tuning in for my spoiler review of Star Wars The Force Awakens. Give me that thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Head over to my website, find the official Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, and all that good stuff. And share the video, guys. I am not going to get mad if you share the video. But thanks for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.